Hey, sup? How you doing? Hi, fi lovers. <laughs> Here I am again. This time we have Iowa ADWX808 cassette deck that I already presented on my web on my YouTube channel many times. This time is fully serviced, bolt, belts, replaced, lubricated, cleaned, capstan, heads, everything. It should work like a charm. And as you know me, I always want to test the equipment within the, let's say, the worst working environment. And for the cassette decks, 120 minutes, 110 minutes cassette tape would be the one. So that's why I have one TDK CD power high bias tape already pre-recorded and I'm just gonna test the playback on this unit. Okay, okay, it was not recorded on DBX, so let's try to play it again. You can already see, notice highs are there and the bass is there, which is very good. Yes, 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 yes. The bass is there. The bass is there. <laughs> You already know, amorphous head, most important probably on this double deck, DBX. We're gonna talk about it a little bit later. Quick auto reverse, auto tape select. <laughs> All what you need. Uh, yeah, so let's rewind this tape a little bit. And while we are doing that, I'm just gonna explain a little bit what is this all about. We have a normal high speed cassette deck. So normal high speed means of course dubbing. You can dub your tape in normal and high speed. Uh, uh, there is a, like a order reverse, quick order reverse, uh, Dolby BC and of course DBX. Both counters are Digital, you can reset your counter whenever you want, as I'm doing it right now. Oh, look at this sound. Yeah, that's my sound. Oh my God, it, it's so good. So, yeah. I explained already that you have a music search option uh, because this is a mixed tape, you cannot use it. But when you have original tape, when the, you have like uh, five tracks on one side, then you can select which one you're gonna listen to. All good there. But here uh, today, I'm gonna just try to take a look at it. It's kind of neat. Um, you have a little one dent here but hey since it had a cover protection which was unusual for that time but I even used to do it they would cover it with uh, some kind of neat uh, thing that you should remove when you buy purchase a deck but if you leave it for 20 30 years to stand to be on the top then it's like a pain in the ass i spent like a three four hours just to remove that ah, sticky gluey shit from the top of this unit but now it's good it has that dent and maybe one scratch but that's it i'm just gonna use this moment to turn off my new york city radiator 
and then I'm gonna put in the other deck Maxel XL2 and try to record something. This time we're gonna use DBX and let's see how it goes. Oopsie. No. I'm gonna press record and play at the same time. And this uh, tiny lad will shine red now. And we are in the recording mode. And since I'm using DBX, I'm gonna push it to the higher levels, even to six or maybe even eight. You know what I mean? And let's see how it goes. Reset. You're listening to the original. I'm pushing till the eight, maybe even 10 decibels. I'm gonna rewind it and play it from the tape. It's almost like original. What's the deal with it? Like if you look at the technical specification, you will see that you will get signal to noise ratio uh, 92 decibels with crown tape, which I'm using right now, and DVX no uh, noise reduction on. With Dolby C, you would get 73. So you get like a 20 decibel more signal to noise, noise ratio and check it out also the wow and flutter is pretty low 0 0.055 which is really great for a cassette deck of this age and type uh yeah we got like a 16 kilohertz for normal chrome 17 and metal but trust me it's like uh i have the decks with the better results but they were not sound the sound was not great like on this one <laughs> so you should try to when you are recording of course uh, adjust the bias and there is some kind of a specification for the type of tapes you have uh, on the top of the unit so you you know where your knob should be I already explained this one, but it's kind of interesting. Yeah. But usually if you have a good tape, very good tape, keep it in a normal position. If you have the best tape ever, keep it in the right position. If the tape is not so good, keep it in the left position. <laughs> Let's see how this recording was good or not. Very good. So you get a lot of decibels here, but let's keep it simple. I'm gonna put it on Dolby B and I'm gonna record with a little bit of less power, let's say. I'm gonna keep it around the uh, Dolby symbol here, Dolby B, and then I'm gonna play it without Dolby. Great results. So yeah, as I said, Amorphous had the right side is recording, the left side is for playing back. You can dub your tapes, you can play both of them all the time if you put it in a loop. All right. It's going a little bit more than I would want it to, but this, this is a good time. Let's go back, play it without Dolby. You get all those highs much clearer. those high just hear, hear them yeah yeah but you get a lot of noise so what's the thing you can do all my tricks if you are using it recording electronic music stuff like that but if you are playing it uh, recording classical rock pop this and that you will have to take care of this if you are recording Dolby B play it with Dolby B if recording Dolby C, play it with Dolby C. DBX, 
played with all the DVX. But those are the tricks that I was used when I was a kid. <laughs> and they are still working. So this is a really great unit. Clean, I laid a bit, couple of dents, but not so much scratches on the top because it was covered all the time. A couple of, um, I don't know, dents here and there, maybe here, but it's working like a charm, really. I like it. And I will include both of those tapes. Of course, I'm going to record the other one. So both of those tapes will come with this unit. So if you are buy, you will get it. <laughs> this one will be electronic music. The other one will be electronic music. <laughs> Take care.